I will use the word diet from time to time, but more often than not, especially from a performance point of view, I, I love the term fuel and the analogy that the way that we're eating, if you're eating an athletic um, diet, so to speak, it, it's eating with the mindset that you're fueling your body rather than eating to um, satisfy your appetite. Um, and the interesting thing with appetite is that you'll generally crave what you've had most recently and what you tend to eat more frequently. So if you're eating more sugary foods, you may have noticed you, you've got a higher appetite for more of a for more sugary type foods. Um, and that's probably one of the reasons why breakfast is so important because you're sort of setting the tone for the day, for the day, so to speak, um, in that what are you going to crave for the rest of the day? Food diary, so that, like I mentioned before, um, I'll often get you to experience at least one food diary every couple of months just to heighten your awareness on, on the habits that you're in. Um, so for your own sake, but then also um, if we do some work one-to-one -one, or if you're currently on my individualised program, um, I can ask you how's your breakfast going and we can put specific goals in place around the areas that you um, need to focus on. Um, so we'll use your food diary just like the sleep diary last week. So if you have done a food diary, um, whether it be through taking photos or writing down in a journal, uh, I'll get you to keep that close by um, and then I'll, I'll take you through some questions so you can um, note down some areas that you can take away from this presentation. Starting off with your food diary, so the simple things. Are you doing these three things really, really well? And if you're doing these three, these three things really, really well, you're probably doing 80% of what we need um, of eating a, um, a diet that's fueling your training. The best bit about these three things is they're very simple and they, they don't cost a lot of money and they don't require any fancy equipment. They do require a little bit of your time and your energy in the food preparation and being organised, but um, anyone can do them. So that's it. Yeah, drinking plenty of water is number one. Limit your processed foods. Uh, I'll go into processed foods a little bit later on, but typically speaking, anything that has more than five ingredients on it, other than like a trail mix, is probably a processed food. These are our five different food groups, which I'm sure you've seen before, and some of the benefits that you'll get from these five different areas. So complex carbohydrates with the grains we want to, is really important for our energy. Vegetables and fruit, really important for your immune system. Um, protein in terms of gaining lean muscle mass or just maintaining your lean muscle mass is really important. And then like um, dairy, like yogurt, will have some probiotics in it, which can have some illness and disease prevention qualities to it. More often than not, if, you, if you're making a meal, we want to try and aim towards four out of five of these um, columns in a, in a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So if we compare it to the athlete way of eating, we pretty much want to eat what the Australian way or what we can potentially be conditioned to, it, to our upbringing to have what we have for dinner time. And if we can eat as close to what dinner normally looks like for breakfast and lunch, then we're going a long way at in increasing our nutrient density over the week.